Sorry about the technical difficulties. Inshallah, today we're going to continue where we left off last time, which is the end of Surah Ma'idah and the beginning of Surah Al An'am. Surah Ma'idah, the big lesson in the Surah was to fulfill your oaths to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not take the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with being on the Sirat al Mustaqim as a birthright. Rather, we have to treat it as a blessing. At every moment, our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be expressed through our obedience to Him. And we should plead with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us on the Sirat al Mustaqim and not turn us away from this path. Are we good? And not turn us away from the Sirat al Mustaqim, not take us off. We see at the end of the surah that the Nasara, what they did was they started to place demands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After seeing many miracles, on top of that they asked for an additional miracle from Allah. And the way that they asked as well, they almost demanded, Hal rabbuka? Hey Isa alayhi salam, is your Rabb, is he able to bring down this table for us? Because of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I've shown you so many miracles, now you want miracles on demand, I'll give you this one. But if you disbelieve and you, if you uh, express ingratitude after this, I will punish you. Surah Al-An'am, the connection between these two surahs is that Surah Al-An'am shows you that you don't need to ask for extraordinary miracles. The world around you is a miracle. You just look at this world and that's enough to cause you to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before we start the surah, however, let's go through a little bit of background. Surah An'am is the first surah after Surah Fatiha that's a Makki surah. So you have Surah Baqarah, Surah Ali Imran, Surah Nisa, Surah Ma'idah. One after the other, all of these surahs are Madani. Now in the middle you have two Makki surahs, Surah An'am, Surah A'raf, then you go back to Madani surahs with Surah Anfal and Surah Tawbah. Surah An'am, and when it was revealed, and actually uh, taking one step back, Together, Surah An'am and Surah A'raf being Makki Surahs, together they, f they make two parts of a half. There's one story or one theme that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to convey and there's two halves to it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He does this a lot in the Qur'an. Sometimes He mentions both halves of a theme that He wants to convey and sometimes He just mentions one. For example, Alhamdulillah. Whenever you say Alhamdulillah, all praise is to Allah, for all praise to belong to Allah, automatically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs to be free of all deficiency. So whenever you say Alhamdulillah, automatically it implies that there's a Subhanallah after there. But over there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just mentions one half. Surah An'am and Surah A'raf together, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you one whole theme. What do they do? Both of these surah together, they want to remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power and qudra in all different ways. Shah Wali Allah Muhaddis Dehlawi rahmatullahi alayhi was a great muhaddis and great scholar of the Quran. So he wrote a book called al fawzul Kabir fi usul al tafsir and in that book he outlines principles for a person to approach the tafsir of the Quran so he describes ayat and surahs as falling into different categories so one category that he says is tafkir bi ayatillah to remind the people of Allah through the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and another way of reminding people is tafkir bi ayyamillah reminding people through the days of Allah, meaning the incidents, meaning the people, the nations of past. So together, Surah An'am is tafkir bi ayatillah. When you read this surah, your eyes will open up. You'll see the signs and power and majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unfold in front of you. And Surah A'raf is about nations past, people who failed, people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent messengers to, yet they rejected and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dealt with them. So together with tafkir bi ayatillah and tafkir bi ayyamillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a complete picture of tafkir and a reminder of him and his power and how he deals with people. Now moving on to this surah. This surah, Surah An'am, it was revealed very near the end of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's 
Makki period. Uh, very shortly thereafter, Rasulullah he emigrated to Medina. And this surah, when we look in the tafsir, we see that it is huge surah. Over one juz long, it was all revealed at one time. Along with Surah Al-Kahf, it was another long surah that was revealed all at one time. And when this surah descended, it descended with 70,000 angels at one time, this long surah. And it's coming when Nabi Wasallam and the Muslims are dealing with all sorts of oppression in Mecca. And what was Nabi Wasallam dealing with? He's banished from his hometown. He has to stay out in the valley of Abu Talib with his close relatives. He's banished for three years. Finally, after that period is lifted, his biggest two pillars of support, his uncle and his wife, they pass away very with a very within a short span of time. They both pass away. Then he goes to Taif. He has to deal with the humiliation and the oppression that he had to deal with at Taif. Now imagine how Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is feeling at that time. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, around this time period, Allah reveals this surah. You should also read this surah when you're down, when things are tough, when you're trying to figure out how to piece your life together. What should I do? Where will I go? Read this surah and you'll see a great, you'll be comforted by this surah. But along with that, this surah, along with comfort, it mentions the depravity of the people of, the, of Mecca. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala says that if you want to know how perverted and how astray the people were in the time of Jahiliyyah, read this surah. Their practices are outlined for you in this surah. But side by side, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does is He invites the, he invites the mushrikeen to Islam. And He does this in two ways. You'll read two types of uh, ayat in this surah. One is, قُلْ 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 Say, O oh Muhammad, say, O oh Muhammad, tell them like this, tell them like this, tell them like this. They say something, prove them wrong. Tell them to do this, tell them to do that, tell them like this. Another type of ayah is, wa huwa alladhi, wa huwa alladhi. They're just statements. Allah isn't addressing the mushrikeen or disproving them or asking questions. In the wa huwa alladhi ayah, Allah is saying, Allah is like this, Allah is like this, Allah is like this. So, qul, qul, qul. Say to them this, say to them this, say to them this. Ask them to answer this question. And then, wa huwa alladhi, wa huwa alladhi. Allah is like this, Allah is like this, Allah is like this. You see this throughout the surah. And again, as I said, Weaving this whole surah together is a reminder of the blessings of Allah. Telling us, as compared with Surah Maida, Surah Maida was filled with extraordinary miracles, things that are against the laws of nature, you can say, mu'jizat. This surah is telling us that this world that we live in is a miracle. If you look at this world with the eye of Iman, there's no way that you can't be guided to realizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Rabb and the Creator. You won't need any extraordinary miracle. You won't need the moon to be split. The moon in and of itself is a miracle. Why do you need it to be split? Right? The food that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala produces for you in this world is a miracle. Why do you need food that set, a table set down from the sky? This is what we learn in the surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts out by saying, Alhamdulillah, all praise belongs to Allah. I said just at the beginning, whenever there's Alhamdulillah, it's implied subhanallah. All praise belongs to Allah and Allah is pure from all faults. Who is Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created the heavens, which is a miracle. Wal ard and the earth. Waja'ala dhulumat and he created darkness. Physical darkness, spiritual darkness. They're both miracles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wal nur, physical light, spiritual light. These are also miracles of Allah. Despite all of this, Despite all of this, the kuffar, they make equals to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who is Allah? Remember I was saying, wa huwa alladhi, huwa alladhi. Here it is, the first one. Huwa alladhi khalaqakum. He is the one who created you. How did he create you? Min tinin, from clay, from dirt. What this means is, that the our food comes out of the dirt when a person, they, I mean, Adam was created from dirt. But for us to be created from dirt, either it means we came from Adam or it means that sustenance for people comes from the ground in uh, vegetation. We eat that, animals eat that, and we eat the animals from there. Strength is built up within us. 
the fluids that are needed to reproduce come from that, stem from that. This is what it means. So Allah, He created you from earth. Summa qada ajala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He appointed a time. Wa ajalun musamman. And this appointed time is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Summa antum tamtarun. And then you oppose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're in doubt about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, wa huwa Allah. Who is Allah? He is Allah in the heavens and in the earth. Ya'lamu sirrakum wa jahrakum. He knows the hidden. He knows what's open. Wa ya'lamu ma taksibun. He knows what you do. He knows what you earn. Wa ma ta'tihim min ayatim. And Allah has given you so many signs in this heaven and the earth. And but not a sign comes if you don't want to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sign. If you want to deny, Allah says, I give them every every sign. Wa ma ta'tihim min ayatim min ayatim illa kanu anha mu'ridin. They reject it. Faqad kathabu bil haqqi lamma ja'ahum. They respect, they, they reject the truth when it comes to them. Fasufa yatihim amma umma kanu bihi yastahziyun. Some news is going to come to them soon. They're going to mock it. Alam yaro kam ahlakna min qablihim. You're going to mock the Quran. You're going to mock Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But work their people before you. Min qalnim makkannahum who we gave strength fil ard in the earth. Ma lam numakkil lakum. More strength than you. They were better and they were stronger than you. These nations are described in the next surah. In the surah you have five nations that are constantly mentioned in the Quran. Why are they mentioned? Or who are they first? The first one is Nuh alayhi salam. Qawmi Nuh. Then we have the Ad, the people of Hud alayhi salam. The Samud, who are the people of Salih alayhi salam. Then you have Qawmi Lut, the people of Lut alayhi salam. And the Madian, the people of Shu'ib alayhi salam. Along with that, Ibrahim alayhi salam is mentioned quite a bit. Musa alayhi salam is mentioned quite a bit in the Quran. Why are these people nations? Nuh alayhi salam is an international incident. All nations they know about Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. The other nations, they were, they were all near the Arabs. So the Arabs were familiar with them. They would pass through their ruins. They would see them. They could take lessons from them. As far as Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam's living reminder, the Kaaba, was in Mecca for them to see with their own eyes. And the Yahud were also in uh, the Hijaz in Medina uh, more than in Mecca. But they would see them, they would interact with them, they would talk about Musa alayhi salam. That's why these prophets and these nations are mentioned a lot in the Quran. Not to say that there weren't any other nations, there weren't any other prophets, there are plenty of prophets. But these were mentioned because the first audience of the Quran, the Quraysh, they could take heed from them by uh, knowing about these places intimately. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, these people, they were more powerful than you. And now look at another miracle. I'm sending you miracles from the sky. I sent you down rain from the sky. Uh, upon them, I mean. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave them gardens. But despite all of this, they didn't recognize Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He destroyed them because of their sins. And he raised up nations after them. But when a person has an attitude that I'm not going to believe, I'm going to close my eyes, I refuse to see the miracles around me. If you made up your mind not to believe, nothing will make you believe. Allah says that if I cause a book to descend and you could hold it and touch it with your hands, the kuffar are so adamant, they're still going to say, This is magic. What's your problem? Why do you always have a problem with what Allah sends? Allah sends messengers as men, and you're saying, We want an angel. But if we were to send an angel, and what else happens whenever we send a messenger? Oh Muhammad, these people in the past, the messengers in the past, they've been mocked. So you relax, take it easy. They mocked the messengers, they were destroyed, their time is coming. Now Allah says, قُلْ سِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Go in the earth and see um, what happened to the people of the past and on and on. And many, many miracles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are mentioned throughout this surah. The birds flying in the sky and many other things. But now we'll come to when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was the four forefather of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ibrahim alayhi salam also had to deal with a hostile crowd and with a crowd who denied Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He also had to deal with people who were involved in magic and sorcery. Where did Ibrahim alayhi salam live? On the outskirts of Babylon. 
واتبعوا ما تتل الشياطين واتبعوا واتبعوا ما تتل الشياطين على ملك سليمان وما كفر سليمان ولكن الشياطين كفروا يعلمون الناس السحر وما انزل على الملكين ببابل there was magic going on in babylon and ibrahim alayhi salam he lived in the time of nimrud the ruler of babylon who used magic who had these extraordinary things to try to subjugate the people did ibrahim alayhi salam need all of this to believe in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ibrahim goes to his father, he says, Father, why do you make idols? Why do you make them gods? I see you and I see my people. I see them in clear error. What gave Ibrahim the strength? Did he see some extraordinary thing? No. We showed Ibrahim the signs and the miracle of the heaven and the earth. We gave him eyes that were willing to see and look at this earth and cause his belief to increase so he could be one of conviction nobody can look at this earth even a person who claims that they're an atheist won't say that this earth came from nothing they always assign a power or a cause that brought this world this world to be along with that this surah was addressed to the mushrikeen but think for a moment replace the mushrikeen because other than hindus we don't see too many mushrikeen running around today what you could think of rather than a mushrikeen think of atheists of today people who deny people who don't think of any higher power think of them and look at this surah and say this surah should establish and this surah should teach these people that look at this and then you'll find allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so ibrahim alayhi salam he was guided by these things so now ibrahim alayhi salam he wanted to show the people that yes the world is great and it reminds me of allah but its greatness is still overshadowed by allah don't stop start by staring at the world it should lead you to god you shouldn't stop you shouldn't look at the world and just get stuck there a star came out he said this is my rub now this is one thing in surah ibrahim surah anbiya ibrahim alayhi salam he says well, uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says walaqad atina ibrahim rushdahu min qabl we guided ibrahim alayhi salam before so don't say some people they try to say ibrahim alayhi salam he gradually came to islam the anbiya they're ma'soom if you want to know about their isma go to tawheed center reminder 13 from two days ago you can go on the youtube page we talk about the isma of the anbiya alayhi salatu was salam how none of them were ever involved in shirk or associating partners with Allah at any time in their life. Not only that, they weren't involved in any sin period. Anyway, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we guided Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam before. So Ibrahim alayhi salam was doing this to debate with the people, to show the people, to teach them a lesson, to say, okay, you're saying that this is God? Fine. Suppose this is God. Now look, it's disappeared. The star has disappeared. I want a God that's always there. Okay. Now the moon came out. The people are very happy. Yeah, yeah, Ibrahim is coming around. But it went away. If my Lord didn't guide me, I would be misguided like you are. Then the sun came out. People said, oh, Ibrahim is coming around. Yeah, yeah, fine. This is my rod. This is bigger than the moon. This is bigger than the stars. But it went away to said, Ya Qawmi, oh my people, inni bari'un mimma tushrikun. I'm free from what you associate from Allah. Allah has shown me that the heavens and earth, He showed me the miracle of them, and He showed me that He's in control of them. Inni wajahtu wajhiya lilladhi fataras samawati wal arda hanifa. I turn my face away from everything to who? To the creator of the heavens and the earth. Hanifa, I'm set apart from everybody. Wa ma ana min al mushrikeen. And I'm not from the mushrikeen. And this conviction of him allowed him to stand up and loudly and proudly say, La ilaha illallah, there's no God but Allah. Anybody, people taunted him, people opposed him. He opposed the people. He argued with them loudly. He said, Qala fillah. You argue about me with Allah, but waqad hadan, Allah has given me eyes of basira. I see the truth. I don't fear anything from what you assume. Associate with my Rabb. What's Ya Rabbi? Kulla shayin ilma. My Rabb is vast. Afala tatazakarun. You should take it. Wa kaifa akhafu ma ashraktum. Why should I fear what you uh, associate, the partners you make with Allah? Wala takhafuna. And you don't fear that annakum ashraktum billah. That you're making partners with Allah. Ma lam yunazzil bihi alaykum sultana. Without any proof or authority. Fa ayyul fariqayni ahakku bil-am. 
between me and you, who's more likely to be saved and to be in Allah's protection? In kuntum ta'lamun, if only you knew. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned 17 prophets, all from the progeny of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, over here Ishaq alayhi salam, Nuh alayhi salam came before, but then Dawood, Sulaiman, Ayyub, Musa, uh, Harun, وَكَذَلِكَ نَزِّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Then Zakariya, Yahya, Isa, Ilyas, Ismail, Alias, Yunus, Lut, all of these prophets are mentioned. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that, ذَلِكَ هُدَى اللَّهِ These are the ones who we guided. But وَلَوْ أَشْرَكُوا Despite them being prophets, shirk is such a terrible thing that perchance they did it. But even these people being great prophets, being descended from a great prophet, if they were to do shirk, all of their deeds would also go away and go to waste because shirk is a zero tolerance policy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a red line. But they didn't do shirk. These are the people who we gave the kitab, we gave hikmah, we gave nubuah. Allah guided them, so you go ahead and you follow their guidance. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions miracles. I wanted to finish the surah today. We'll just finish the juz today. So we can try to take a little bit, five more minutes, right? Inna Allah faliqul habbi wa nawa. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He shows you the miracle of the heavens and the earth. Inna Allah faliqul habbi wa nawa. If you want to see why Allah is Allah, don't look at a huge thing. Look at a small seed. This small seed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes it to split. It's so hard to dig through the ground, yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes this small seed to come and pierce through the ground and come up. Like this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He takes the dead out of the living. A seed, an egg, something that seems inanimate and dead, Allah brings a living thing out of it and vice versa. That's Allah, that's Allah's power. What turns you away from Allah? Faliqul isbah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala along with splitting seeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala splits the darkness with light. sakana, And He's made uh, night as a rest for you, uh, uh, as a rest for you. Naturally, whenever it gets dark, in the winter it gets dark early, we get sleepy. When it gets later, when the night gets later in the summer, we get sleepier later on. Who made all of this? Who gave us sukoon with the night? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ husbana. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this system of the sun and the moon husbana. Me or you, we might pride ourselves on always being on time. One day or the other will be late, we'll get stuck in traffic. For thousands and thousands of years, the moon and the sun Sun had been moving predictably, never late, always on time. This is the planning of Allah, the wise, the mighty. Look at all of this. Think that only a mighty creator like Allah can do this. What else did He do? He made the stars to guide you in the darkness of the land and in the sea. But Allah has given you signs. Allah has given you so many signs for people of understanding. The smarter you are, the more you'll be led to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah took you from one person. He's made a temporary abode for you in this life. And a permanent abode for you in the akhirah. Allah has given you so many signs. Won't you understand? And Allah gives you rain from the skies. And with that, فَأَخْرَجْنَا بِهِ نَبَاتَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ He brings out vegetation. فَأَخْرَجْنَا مِنْهُ خَضِرًا نُخْرِجُ مِنْهُ حَبًّا مُتَرَاكِبًا And then look at the date palms. وَمِنَ النَّخْلِ مِنْ طَلْعِهَا From that small seed, you get a sprout. And from there, you get قِنْوَانٌ دَانِيَا Those bunches of dates leaning down. دَانِيَا وَجَنَّاتٍ مِنْ أَعْنَابٍ And you have gardens of grapes and olives. وَالرُمَان And uh, pomegranates. مُتَشَابِهًا وَغَيْرَ مُتَشَابِهًا Some are like one another, some differ. انظروا إلى then look at your fruits when they're ripe and they're ready for you. These are signs for people to believe. But there's one obstacle. Some people take the jinn as partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then they associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll end here tomorrow or day after. We'll speak about inshallah about why people are misled led from when all of this is there the very same thing that Allah uses as a means of guidance this world 
the jinnat and their partners, the shayateen from the ins and the jinn, they use these same things, the world and science, which should bring you closer to Allah to misguide you and say that they're contradictory to, they contradict the Quran, therefore you can't believe in the Quran and deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people of iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people of insight. Wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.